What is up everybody? Derek here from DW Designs and welcome back to the channel. And if you guys are new here, welcome, subscribe. We'd love to have you part of the DW Designs team. As you guys just saw there, I was hard at work there crunching some numbers, trying to get something figured out for this rear bumper for the Subaru, which seems to be coming along nicely, but there's a few things that I'm concerned about, but we'll get them straightened out, ironed out as usual. And today, we're gonna go ahead and get started working on repairing this bumper. So, with that, let's get to the intro. All right, we are in the office and I'm gonna address the concerns right away that I personally have about this bumper that we're creating. And that is these corners right in here. My concern is, is I hope that it fits the body properly. Fits it nice and close and all that. But the only way to do that is to bend one up and find out but to be honest with you guys I don't want to do that because if I do that that's gonna waste basically half a stick of tubing which then will come out of my pocket because obviously I'm not gonna make the client pay for that um, kind of mistake if I was to make that kind of mistake and backing up a little bit about the 3d scan that we did um, I did get it and I tried downloading it, but for some odd reason it's just not downloading to my computer. So I don't know if it's because it's such a big file that's taking forever for it to download or what. So I'm going to set it up to download while I'm working on the other bumper. So that way we can import that into Fusion 360. I already know how to import Bentec into Fusion 360. So if I can import the both together and then I can put it on in three-dimensional space to make sure that it actually fits properly that will be fantastic so that way I know that I am headed in the right track and that I don't have to make any um, little minute changes before there's a mistake so just want to clear the air there about this so this is not the final product yet but we're getting there so one thing I also want to tell you guys is these pick points here are the sensors where the sensors are going to be located that took me some time to figure out how i'm going to do that but i managed to find them in a pretty good place and they're the right distance apart and everything up and down it matches the tube and everything which is phenomenal it i didn't think it'd even do that as far as like the angles go it's pretty darn close but that's what it was on the other bumper as you guys can see here, this tube here looks a little bit funny. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like you guys can see the mouse. Yes, it looks a little bit funny, but that's because it comes straight out and then bends back. And the reason for that is, is because as this piece curves around the bumper, this also has to curve around the bumper. So the bumper should actually sit almost inside of there just a little bit is what I'm hoping for um, and shooting for anyway. So that way it's nice and clean and the top of the bumper should just be splitting halfway down the center of this piece right here. Now, as far as the tire carrier goes and stuff, guys, I haven't figured that out yet. Um, I have some ideas in the back of my head, but I'm not gonna disclose those right now because I really want to finalize the bumper style first before I start trying to figure out where I'm going to mount the tire carrier. So that way we have a pretty good mind. Keep messing up my words there, but pretty good sense of idea of what's happening here and by the way also this right here is going to have a hitch receiver built into it right there so these tubes are actually going to go into a hitch receiver um, i just didn't feel like making that in the computer system and putting that in there 
because um, I know it'll work so I'm not too worried about that and also these this all in here is gonna be paneled it's gonna be paneled in this probably will be paneled in also this will not be paneled in but the rest of it will be so it'll kind of have like a uh, like like a box style kind of bumper but with tubing also so it'll kind of give it that uh, hybrid look as I like to call it of between the boxy style and the round tube style so we're gonna get that done guys um, like I said we're gonna have to be patient about the computer system I don't know how long it's gonna take for that file to download but there's always other things to do and with that we're gonna go ahead and jump into the uh, rear bumper and fixing that so all right I'll see you guys out there in the workshop okay so we got the bumper downstairs here in the main part of the workshop and I went ahead and went through the marker and marked the center line references of all these tabs up here because we're actually going to replace all of them including the light bar tabs because um, uh, tabs that came with a light bar which was the perfect width for those but I don't like that look I want it to be right on the light bar so we're going to go ahead and fix that because that's the way it was supposed to be originally but the measurements that the um, company had for the light bar on there was for with their brackets and I didn't know that so we're gonna change that um, there's a split right here crack right there and then I went ahead and marked the center of the of the bull bar as well so now all we got to do is uh, get cutting start cutting all this stuff off grind it nice and smooth make sure we keep our references and then start making some stuff to go back on here so Alrighty guys, so as you guys just saw, um, went ahead and welded this up. Um, not pretty, but that's fine. Not worried about it. It's actually going to get uh, ground away for the most part. And then on top of it, I'm also going to move the shackle mounts over and weld the shackle mount on top of that to strengthen this piece here that, that cracked along there. And I'm going to put it on the same place on this side over here. And then um, everything else here is relayed out, as you guys can see, because I did end up taking my reference lines off because of the fact that I wanted to do it properly, clean up the tubes and make it look nice and just go the extra mile, you know, just to make sure that uh, everything is good to go. So, all right, 
um, that's pretty much it for this right now. Um, we're going to have to go in the office on Bentec again and make the hoop that went here to here or bull bar rather bleh, bull bar uh, rather is what it's called and that's going to go right there. These are the new marks for the light bar. That's where the light bar is going to be placed. But first we need to start with the bull bar and then from there we'll finish up everything else. So that way we make sure everything's nice and centered and everything looks great. So, all right, to the office we go. All right, so we're back in the office now and I got some bad news. This hasn't moved a bit and it's been probably two hours now, maybe, maybe hour and a half, I don't know, something like that. But it hasn't moved at all, so I don't know what we're gonna do, but I'm just gonna leave it on for right now and hope that maybe tomorrow if I come in, it'll be done, ready to go. But anyway, let's uh, let's open up Bentec here. Could be a little bumpy here for a second, guys. All right, so we're going to go into assembly and we're gonna go to pick points. We're gonna first off select our die, which is, or our material, which is inch and three quarter DOM and then our inch and three quarter DOM 120 wall die. I'll blow this up bigger. Now, the total size is 36 inches outside to outside, which is what we want. So we need to subtract one full tube length to get outside to outside because everything works based off of the center of the tube. So if we minus inch and three quarter from three feet, that'll be 30, uh, 34 and a quarter inches. So 34 and a quarter. So we're gonna have to half that and half of 34 and a quarter is 17 and an eighth. So we're gonna enter right 17 and 0.125, which is an eighth. Gonna hit apply, go to the left side, hit apply. That's outside to outside. We're gonna hit clear values. We're going to reselect our pick point. We're going to pick this side here. Doesn't really matter, but we're just going there for right now. So I remember last time I went up eight and over six. Hit apply. You're gonna swap it to the other side and hit the left side now. And then hit apply. Zoom out a little bit. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to bend. We're gonna enter two because there's two bends. Hit okay. We're gonna click this pick point, go to that one, go to this one, and then go to that one. There you go. There is your bull bar. And if you wanna see it in real time, kinda like an actual tube, you hit display and now you got yourself your bull bar. So with that guys, we're going to also do one thing. We're gonna enter a straight bar right here because I want that to tell me when I click on that part, how long exactly it needs to be. So with that, we're gonna hit transfer to custom 3D and there's the part right there. If you guys can see that, First bend is located six inches and 110 thousandths. So you mark it. And then, which by the way is just shy of, of an eighth. It's probably, uh, probably 1 16th. And then bend number two is 26, start a bend, or sorry, 27 and a little over a half and the angle is 53 degrees. So that's what we gotta do. And then after that, we'll put it in the tube notcher and we'll set the tube notcher to 53 degrees and then that'll give us our zero across the base. So there we go. Well, let's go uh, bend this guy up and get it tack welded to the bumper.
All right, so we got the tube all marked up, ready to go in the bender. Notice how you guys, um, notice how you guys, man, I just cannot talk today. Notice how I mark the arrow going this way. That is the way it's supposed to go in the bender because if you put it in the opposite way, you will not have the same bend on each side. One side will actually be sticking higher than the other and that's not fun. So, so now we're ready to bend. Let's go ahead and stick it in the bender and start bending these to 53 degrees each side. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna get this to where it's at zero here on my bender, which is where it starts getting tight. All right, which is there. It's three degrees less, but that's because it has three degrees spring back. So therefore, it, wherever I go on, on this piece is gonna be exactly where we need it to be. So before we bend it, we're gonna grab my tool over here. This guy's is made by Swag Off-Road. Shout out to Swag Off-Road. And what it is, is it's a angle finder basically on a piece that clamps to your tubing. And what that does is you hit zero on the back side, and as you bend it and move it to the next spot, you put it back to zero so that way you have a nice flat plane. Otherwise, you might have it to where it's like crooked one way or the other. So let's go ahead and put this guy on here. Sorry, I should have brought you guys with me. But I'll bring you guys right now. So we'll turn this guy on. We'll hit zero. See how it's at zero now? If you guys can read that. Ugh, there we go. So now we're at zero. And then we're going to go ahead and bend to 53 degrees. Hopefully there's a better view for you guys. Focus over here, there we go. Whoa, see, I maxed it out, I wasn't paying attention. So, put that down. Luckily, if you don't do that too many times, it won't hurt the machine. Whoa, sorry about that guys. In a little bit more. There we go. Sorry guys, this is a little bit challenging for me with one hand, but we're getting it done. Let me uh, put you down here for a second. There we go. Fifty, one, two, three. There we go. Fifty-three degrees, right there on the money. We'll let it loose. Take this guy out. Put it right there temporarily, and we'll go ahead and swing this guy back around. Why? Uh, oh, there we go. Man, that guy is in there. And something's holding it in place, guys. So, well, we'll, uh, give me a second. Man, that was on there. Okay. Now, before we go any further, this, this piece down here is moving too easy right now. So let's just double check. Real quick over here. But this is on the right number. Okay. Take our fancy tool here. Set it to 53 degrees, 51, 2, and 3. And we are we are under 50 degrees right now. By one, 
two, three. We're under by three degrees. So it moved on us three degrees. So let me fix that, guys. I'll see you guys when we're done. Obviously, you guys just put this back in when you do it like this and make sure this is zero and then bend it, same process, and then you're done. I apologize for that last clip. That was a little bit insane there, trying to do everything with one hand, but got it done. Looks great. Um, same height on both sides. All we got to do now is set the tube notcher to 53 degrees and notch it inward on each side and we're done. We can tack weld it on the bumper and get it where we want it and then go from there. So. Okay guys, I have to keep this short and sweet because my battery died and my memory card is about full too. So, got the bow bar done. It's tack welded on. Not gonna weld it yet. That's gonna be the last thing I do. Tomorrow we'll go ahead and get all the uh, um, tabs made out for the light bar and the shackles. And tomorrow we'll also continue working on designing the rear bumper. Um, hopefully once that thing is complete and com completely um, designed, it'll fly together like no man. So. With that, guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. Um, guys, stay safe out there. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow.